I say it mostly in every single video that you should be ashamed of yourself. You clicked on another any card or any number or open prediction trick video tutorial on YouTube. Now, whereas I'm tempted, I'm tempted to use clickbait in this video and rant for the next 15 minutes on why you should be ashamed of everything you stand for. This is not a clickbait video. This is actually gonna be a very nice tutorial of a switch that you could definitely use for an open prediction or in any card, any number trick. Now, if you're not a virgin, you're not familiar with the plot. It's honestly stupid. One spectator names a number, another spectator has a card picked or named, and they happen to coincide. That card happens to be at the number. It's a coincidence, it's one in 52. Most spectators are going to look at the trick and be like, wow, my uncle has done better and he's on a registry. So I'm going to give you guys a method. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of an interesting switch that you could use for the any card, any number open prediction trick. But just know that I know that you know that you're a huge disappointment to your family. This trick is of course sponsored by the Pick Cake Magic Academy. $5 a month, two videos every single week going over card stuff, going over coin stuff. There's over 400 videos already. I think 700 if you count the piggybacker videos, which are exclusive tutorials that I don't post anywhere else, offer $5 a month. Technically you get four videos a week, but I don't really mention that because I'm terrible when it comes to marketing myself. So any card, any number, open prediction. I know you want a tutorial. You want me to rush and show you the switch, but slow down. You're watching this video because you have time. I don't understand people leaving comments saying, hey man, why don't you get to the points? Why is it that you're wasting my time? You are a waste of time. So this is just another switch. This is just gonna be another little bit of a switch that you could use that I think makes use of natural movement in order to accomplish the any card or any number and or open prediction trick. If you're not familiar with these concepts, they're old as the hills. Now, usually you would require the use of a spectator for affirmative reasons of virginity. I'm gonna have to place the deck probably off frame and do uh, most of the action that would take part in the spectator's hand in the actual table. So just keep that in mind. And the production value that I have here, second to none. You're not gonna find this on Pandrea's channel. You're not gonna find this on Chris Ramsey's channel. You're only gonna find it on the channel of a man that has two thumbs and loves blowjobs, this guy. Here's a deck of playing cards. We're gonna mix it up, we're gonna have it shuffled, and uh, you could either have a prediction of a card, in this case, I don't know, maybe the two of clubs, maybe just came randomly to my head and you're going to hand a deck to the spectator now of course that deck is off frame as i mentioned earlier but they're going to deal the cards face down into your hand one at a time now you tell the spectator after they've dealt a couple cards that in a moment they're going to feel an impulse almost like uh the same feeling when their father left them at a young age they're going to feel that same impulse however when it comes to this you just want them to stop dealing so they're going to stop dealing and let's say they stop dealing right here. You say, perfect, sir. You could have stopped dealing anywhere you wanted. As a matter of fact, one more card would have been the two of diamonds. One less card would have been any one of these cards, potentially the queen of clubs, the ace of clubs, all the way down to the king of spades, sir. But remember the prediction card I said earlier? Of course you don't because you have the memory of a goldfish, but it was a two of clubs just as I predicted. Your mom's a hoe, that's another prediction. And uh, because I'm right with this, you could assume I'm right about that. So as you can see, it's a fairly interesting movement here. It's a nice little bit of a hot switch, don't you think? Now, as I mentioned earlier, this does fare the best when the spectator is dealing the cards onto your own hand. Although the uh, switch is going to mimic the action of you taking the deck and turning the cards face up. That's what you're doing here. Now, this is very loosely based on a movement that I saw done by Lee Asher back in the day, I believe in his well done tape. He used it as a force for a spread of cards. I'm using it with one particular card. So the movement is based on it loosely, but that's the closest thing that you're gonna find to it. Now the movement itself is not hard at all. All you're gonna do is essentially just take the bottom card as you flip the rest of the packet over. That's it, this is the original bottom card. But it's gonna look like it's the actual top card. So it's a nice little bit of a visual discrepancy there buddy but it's still a fairly nice switch 
and let's go over the actual mechanics because that's not going to be enough of an explanation. You need the detail of a thousand virgins. So here you go. You're going to have a deck of cards mixed and either a card picked or a prediction made, which is going to be the top card. So in this case, I'm going to leave it face up just for the sake of explanation. Do not do this. This is just again for the sake of explanation. If you do this and I see you, I will stab you. So you're going to have the spectator deal cards face down onto your hand. Let's say that this is a mimic of that particular action. So once they've picked an appropriate spot, the call stop here is where you're actually going to employ the use of the move. Now, I would recommend showing the top card of the deck first and saying one more card would have been this one as you use the other actual card to facilitate the switch. So the reason for that is so that there's justification here. So in this case, here's a switch. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. You could either do this while holding the card into your right hand and holding the deck in mechanics grip in the left hand, or you could just do the move with the cards in the left hand outright, just like that. It's gonna be up to you and your own performance style. Again, I'm not here to hold your hand. I'm just here to show you the move all right so as far as the actual movement itself here you go all we're going to do is we're just going to use our dirty little fingertips to come in contact with the bottom card of this packet at the same time that we're just going to lever all those cards over now because of friction what's going to happen here is that you're going to be able to take this card and slide it towards the right so because of that friction you're going to be able to take that card and slide it towards the right as you use that card to lever all the cards to a face up position apart from itself. So remember this is face up for the sake of explanation, but usually it's gonna look like this, where it just seems like you're turning over all the cards underneath the spread. This is the action you're trying to mimic. So this right here is the action you're trying to mimic. That's the actual way it looks like. And then this is gonna be the actual move itself. So it's very similar. There's just a little bit of a moment of discrepancy there, but it's gonna be a, an action that's very similar to the normal action that you would do. So you're gonna take the card in your right hand if you want, uh, this particular way of doing a move. You're gonna put the card on top and in one seamless action, you're gonna slide this card using friction and you're gonna lever the rest of the packet to a face up position as this card is remaining face down. Now at this point, you're gonna continue spreading the cards as you reiterate that they could have picked any one of these or they could have stopped in any one of these positions, but they chose to stop at this one, which of course matches your prediction. So one more time, you have this way of doing the actual move itself, or you have this way of doing the actual move itself. Either way, you're just flipping over that bottom card and keeping it face down while turning the rest of the packet face up. So one more time, you take this card into the right hand. I'm gonna come in, leave the card on top. I'm gonna lever over all the cards at the same time, pulling this card out into the right, and then continue spreading the cards to reiterate the cards they could have picked. Now pick cake. How can you use this for the legendary, any card at any number, organic, smooth, propolis, mentalism reveal, as I'm sure most of you guys are leaving in the comments. Well, it's just simple. You have a card picked and control to the top of the deck with whatever method you like. There's thousands. If you want to check out the Pick Cake Magic Academy, you have hundreds probably. That's hyperbole, but still. So at this point, all you're going to do is have the spectator name any number. You're going to give the deck to the spectator and you're going to have them deal to that number. And of course, what does that do? Well, that places their card, which you've controlled to the top of the deck, exactly in the position it needs to be to actually do the switch itself. That's one way. If you want to have them name the card, well, it's just a simple fact of, uh, I don't know, lying through your teeth. What card do you want, sir? Uh, the uh, six of spades. Oh man, why do you got to pick the hardest ones? I don't even know if this is going to work. Oh boy, we'll give it a shot anyways. I'll tell you what, sir. Why don't you hold on to the cards and um, uh, name a number, name a number from one to 52. Oh, 13, that's a great number. I've heard the Jews find that number particularly lucky. So why don't you go ahead and, and deal those cards face down in my hand until you reach that number. So that's one, two, three, four. Of course, I don't have to tell you right now that that card's on the bottom because I lied. That card's on the bottom. All I did is that when they named the card, I'm just looking, I'm just looking at the deck. Whenever I see their card, I just control it to the top of the deck as I say, oh boy, this is gonna be hard. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Man, you're making this difficult. And of course, all the while controlling their card to the top. Lie, it's definitely a good method. You're already a magician, you're already lying. So might as well lie some more. So it's a nice switch, you see that? 
It's a nice switch and uh, definitely something you could use as a prediction or as an any card or any number. I hate myself, honestly. I hate myself for being so intelligent to come up with that uh, all on my own, all on my own, of course, uh, based on that wonderful move by Lee Asher. But you know how hard it is to be this smart all the time? It's really difficult. You're walking through restaurants and you're walking through, I don't know, public places and you hear people and uh, their bonics. But it's a good switch, I got to say. It's definitely worthy of any sort of study on your end. It's definitely not a waste of time. So go ahead and take the time, learn it, practice it. It's not going to be an easy move to get, but it's definitely not difficult. So uh, that's it. That's the video. You guys do all the things that people do when it comes to these. Uh, I don't even know what to say at the end of these anymore. Usually I would add little wraps. If it was uh, the early of 2020, I was adding wraps to my uh, actual end of video segments. Now, now it's just a, a stare. Now it's just a empty void that I look into as I stare into the lens of this camera. I'm gazing into the abyss, which I guess is metaphorical for how I see my life.